Welcome to Salesology, conversations with sales leaders, the art of faster, easier, more profitable sales. When you're ready to transform your sales for today's transforming market, we've got you covered with your host, the queen of cold calling and founder of Salesology, award-winning author, speaker, sales trainer, and coach, Wendy Weiss. Hi, welcome to Salesology, conversations with sales leaders, the art of faster, easier, more profitable sales. And I'm your host, Wendy Weiss. I am the founder of Salesology and the Salesology Prospecting Method. I'm also known as the queen of cold calling. Today, our very special guest is Lorraine Deneen. She is the Vice President of Employee Benefits at USI Insurance Services. And Lorraine is an employee benefits consultant. She assists employers in designing cost-effective, long-term strategic plans to meet the benefit plan needs of their employees. And USI focuses on cost control through innovative risk financing tools, USI is a leading insurance brokerage and a consulting firm, also delivering property and casualty, personal risk, program and retirement solutions to large risk management clients, middle market companies, and individuals. So welcome, Lorraine. I am so excited to be talking to you today. So much of of, uh, so many of the clients that we have at Salesology are in the insurance industry. So I'm, I'm very excited to have this conversation. And um, But let's begin at the beginning, which is where we always begin. Tell us your story. Tell us the backstory. How did you end up being the Vice President of Employee Benefits at USI? Sure. And I'm so happy to be here, Wendy. Um, my background, I started my sales career in paychecks. So everyone knows paychecks, right? The payroll company, of course. So I started there in an entry level position as quote unquote, a bank rep. So we would get referrals from bankers, build those relationships of small business owners, typically in like the one to 50 space and assist them with their payroll and HR needs. Um, I loved it. I loved seeing people, talking to new people, um, forming those relationships. So I was there for about a year and a half. And then my next venture took me to sell PEO, which um, if you don't know the acronym, it's a professional employee organization here in the Northeast. We typically, it's a very good viable option for employers to get very good benefits by being part of a larger group of a larger group to uh, save on that benefit spend. And they as well, they get, you know, HR capabilities and such. So I was there for a few months. And uh, then this opportunity at USI kind of came across my LinkedIn. And it was something that it was, uh, I would have to get licensed to be a broker. And, you know, it was going to be a more longer term sales process. So it intrigued me. Um, I'm always up for a challenge of being, you know, an athlete my entire life and excelling in different things. So I decided to take upon the challenge. Um, So I've been doing this now. And that's how I um, got led to USI here in White Plains, New York. So I heard you say that you're an athlete. Uh, What's your sport? Uh, so growing up, I was a huge swimmer, um, huge my whole life, uh, golf as well. My family belonged to a golf club uh, locally. So I really spent so many summers there growing up. And I, it's just something I always did, huge passion for it, started out and just always wanted to be better, always wanted to be better swimming in cold pools, right? In 60 degrees, I remember. Um, no one's coming up for swim practice and I'm there because I just loved it so much. Like I said, as well as golf um, was a huge sport for me as well. I loved um, competing in some tournaments at our golf club growing up as a kid and um, just kind of taking it to the next level, even as an adult with a bunch of women. It was like such a nice thing and also a nice recreational thing too, right? To do with my parents who are a little older, so we're not going to go sit on a beach, right? Um, So I love that aspect of it. And also later on in life, I also took up snowboarding as another just fun 
sport with my husband uh, while we were dating. So a lot of, a lot of different sports, I would say. Wow. Okay. Um, so I'm curious, what made you go into sales and what do you like about being in sales? Uh, so what made me go into it, I love the the work hard, play hard, you know, mentality. I think that it's, you know, the reward, right? That you can work so hard and like in, in sports and win, get a few wins under your belt and really capitalize on those wins. And then people know also that I think there's a level of dependability, right? That you're going to call them at a certain time, be there at a certain time, be a good partner. If you work within the partnership selling, referral-based selling, and also just not being afraid to reach out to people, have new conversations. I think that all of it is motivating and all, and like I said, the financial aspect of it too, that you can elevate yourself and your career and and just love that every bit of what you are doing. So what do you think transferred for you from your background being an athlete? Like what, what are the lessons you learned? Um, I was a ballet dancer. I often say everything I know in life and business, I learned in ballet class. What are the lessons you learned being an athlete that are helping you today in sales? So what I, what's helping me is the never give up mentality, because I think I know that you need that in sales, especially in 2023. And we all know that, listen to the news, right? And play, rates are high. We all know that there's an ec- economic struggle looming. So I think that it's, you know, the, the never give up aspect is more prevalent than ever. And just to keep pushing and keep pushing. And when I used to swim, it was like, if you got four seconds better on your time, let's say, which is such a small marker, it was still getting better, right? So I think the progress is huge as well, like the progress and persistency. I remember as a child, if you, you know, didn't swim all winter, your times would kind would suffer, of course, right? Because you were out of practice. So it's like the constant practice, the constant work, the not being afraid to try something new and change it up, throw out what's working, insert maybe what would work well. The whole dynamic of that to just rewrite the script, I think, is what I really got from being an, an athlete growing up and now into adulthood. So I'm I'm interested. I know you had shared with me before we uh, hit record on this interview, but you had shared with me uh, that while you're not in your current position managing the sales team, in other positions you did. And so I'm wondering what you saw with some of the people that you managed this I have to succeed no matter what. I'm going to push myself no matter what. And some people have it and some people don't. I don't think it's necessarily a learned trait. What, what do you think and what did you see um, when you were, you were managing people? I think people can be motivated in different ways. And I think setting small goals to uh, achieve the larger ones. So I think what's huge in those situations where someone's a not maybe a never give up person, but just going day to day is making those small goals, even hour by hour, like such as like, okay, I'm going to make these 10 phone calls in the next hour. Um, So setting those smaller goals to equate to the larger ones, I think is what can most people and just to pick up that phone every day and have that new conversation. And when you have that good feedback of a good conversation or set an appointment or whatever that metric may be that you are working in, I think that is huge. It's a huge feedback that like, okay, I got one, I can get another one. I think that it builds upon itself and setting those small markers for what I can do and then accomplish builds upon itself. Okay, so when you were managing people, what what I'm hearing is that you helped them define small goals that they could achieve and therefore be successful and keep moving forward. Is that, yes. am I hearing you correctly? Yes, yes. And I, I also believe that it, it starts with 
setting the tone of your day, like waking up early. I think that like having a regimen and an agenda before you even get to your computer, or get to work, or whatever that may be, but waking up early and, you know, having a journal for a few minutes for yourself, whatever your morning routine be, but stick to it. And I believe that it'll set the pace for your whole day. Okay. So then that leads me to the next logical question, which is how do you set up your day? So I scheduling my day and outlook is huge for me and what I'm going to plan and focus on the the days before. So Sunday night or Friday afternoon, whatever that may be to whatever time I have allotted to set up for the next week is I aim for interaction daily and that not not necessarily, you know, we all know it's 2023. People are still remote working. I've of course, we are all going to leave voicemails, right? We cannot expect to get a live person at all times, but whether it be connecting with them on LinkedIn, having a, not just pitching to them, but really trying to be a resource for them as well as giving, I think you have to give to get and having those just re- the consistent daily interaction is what will build upon itself and whatever you did the days and weeks before is going to pay off, you know, in the future. So how do you prioritize when you're setting up your schedule for the following week? How do you prioritize what you're going to be working on? Because I know, I know when I look at my own to-do list, it's really long. So, and I would imagine you're in exactly the same situation. So how do you prioritize and figure out, well, I'm going to do this and I'm not going to do that right now. Yeah. So I, that's a great question. I love it. And I, I think that we all can have these daunting to-do lists, right? And, and sales, there's always a million things to be done. And I think that I know that if I have something on the burner, that's warm and I've had a conversation with someone and I'm waiting for a a follow-up from them or owe them a phone call that I'm going to attack those things first because that's crucial. Then moving on to someone I'm reaching out to cold because that's going to take that more consistent, persistent effort. It's going to, it might not, it it might pay off in in a half a year, right? Six months down the line, but has to be done. But I think I know that reaching out to things that I've already had a meeting on and we're waiting on something from on their end to get back to us so we can do that valuable homework for them and prove ourselves as consultants, then that's going to be on the top of my list. So what I heard you say, Lorraine, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard you say that you're going to do all the things that are closest to you making money first. Would that be accurate? Yes. Whatever's warm on that stove, essentially, it's so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. And what I always tell my clients, um, if you are a salesperson, you're a sales professional, your job is to sell. So when you're looking at your very long to-do list, you do whatever it is that's closest to you making money first. And then you look at your list and you, what's the next thing that's next closest to you getting paid? do that second and so on. And that's exactly what Lorraine's doing. So um, good to have that validated, Lorraine. (laughs) Absolutely. We are going to pause now for a word from our sponsor. But when we come back, uh, Lorraine, I want to ask you uh, some more questions. I want to hear what you're uh, currently working on and um, what makes you kind of crazy. So I'm going to ask you those questions when we come back. But now we have a word from our sponsor, the Salesology Vault. Just about every guest that I've interviewed on the Salesology Conversations with Sales Leaders podcast has had a free gift for our listeners. So what we've done is we have taken all of those gifts and put them all in one place just for you. We call it the Salesology Vault, and it's packed full of free gifts from sales leaders, sales experts, marketing gurus, revenue generation experts. Um, And we generally add a new gift every week. Um, We release a podcast and then 
we add something. So you can log in as often as you'd like and download as many gifts as you'd like. It's all free. You can go to bit.ly forward slash gift vault, or the link to the Salesology Vault is in the show notes. So go to the show notes, click on the link, download your gifts. You'll be glad you did. And we are back with our special guest, Lorraine Deneen, who is the Vice President of Employee Benefits at USI Insurance Services. Welcome back, Lorraine. Thank you. Yeah. So what are you working on these days? So we are, I am, excuse me, not we are. I'm currently working on getting my, meeting my appointment goals. So in When you're a broker, consultant, you have to obtain appointments to have further appointments and close business, of course, right? So it starts with the prospecting to get the appointments and whether that be, obviously, there's many, many ways to skin a cat, right? So we know that, again, the the daily interaction of LinkedIn, the mixed in with the calls, mixed in with networking as well, I think is a huge part of my, what I do and what I excel in, in the past is just networking, giving to get, um, I think is huge, right? Knowing what their interests are and how you can help someone achieve their goals and what their goals are, because it'll help you identify what they, when it comes full circle and what they can do to help you achieve your goals as well. Yeah. So um, I know that Uh, You've been in sales for quite a while. I'm curious what you have seen that has changed over the past several years, because I know, you know, we've seen a lot of changes, but what what has changed for you in terms of uh, being able to set those appointments? Because let's face it, if you can't set an appointment with somebody that says, yes, I want to talk to you about whatever it is you're selling, you're not going to sell anything. So (laughs) what has changed? So I know that what has changed is definitely doing your homework on a prospect. There's so many tools and resources we can use to find out about a prospect, their business, their personal, even what they like, what their business is doing for certain their needs in terms of their consultants, um, their HR, you know, all of this that leads into our usually good conversations where we play in that employer space. So what what they're currently doing, um, and I be, I know that also the shift from in person to remote. I mean, I started selling in a pandemic environment, so going in with a mask to meet with someone was was not strange to me. And if you wanted to kick me out or whatever the case of a business, then fine. But I think now getting in front of people in person is going to be so valuable. And I I think that's where the push is coming from just, oh, I'll send them on WebEx and we'll just meet virtually. I think that to really establish those connections again and the value to bring, I think that I know that we have to try to shift to being in person and whether that be traveling, whatever you need to do uh, to be with that person. Because anyone, we're doing so many WebEx and we're doing so many Zooms. And I I think it's becoming a little just monotonous and dull for us. I would agree. Making that human being to human being connection is really important. And uh, what what is the saying that people buy from people they know, like, and trust? It's so much easier uh, to meet someone and build the relationship and develop that uh, know, like, and trust factor if they've actually met you. Yeah. Yes, a handshake and a, an eye, you know, a real eye contact and can go such a long way over. And then whether it be, okay, let's have a lunch, but there's still going to be that valuable content. You're not just going to talk through it. There's still going to be an, a presentation of some sort. I think that, you know, bringing that value versus just sharing a screen is huge. Right. And one of the things I think that has been good about Zoom or doing a WebEx is it has allowed some companies to be able to sell in a a wider territory 
because, you know, I am here in New York City, but I can work with people on the West Coast uh, because, uh, well, of course, we always had telephones, so we could talk <laughs> on the telephone. But now it, it at least enables me to get to to meet them uh, visually on a Zoom call. However, if you're selling in your local geographic region, being able to meet them, like actually physically meet them, uh, that's just huge. Yes. Yeah. And I, th- I never th- thought it was something that we would take for granted, right? Like commuting into the city for all the, I've done it for years, my first job. And, you know, you just, you just did it. And there was no, oh, I'm working remote. There was no such thing. And now it's, we have options. And I think it's taking us a little step back to move forward and knowing that the option is there. It's always been there to be in person. And, and now it's there again. So tell me, tell me what makes you crazy. I asked you earlier, what do you like about being in sales? But what makes you crazy about being in sales? Or maybe just simply what are you not so crazy about being in sales? And how do you deal with that? Yeah, so I, I know for me, it's just keeping that that motivation, that fire every day. You know, I'm we're not going to pretend like we all don't have peaks and valleys in terms of motivation and the to do list and that's never ending. And to keep pushing, on, calling and pushing on people that really don't maybe necessarily engage you the first, second, third time. We know that it takes, you know, an average of five to 18 times for a prospect in this industry to take the call or take the appointment, you know, whatever that may be on an average. So I know that the motivation is to just keep going, keep going. But when you try, when you lose sight of it, how do you reel yourself back in? I think is what drives me a little crazy and other salespeople. But not in yourself. It drives you crazy in other salespeople. Oh, no, no, no. In, in myself, right? Like, I think silencing that inner voice in your head is always going to be the toughest part in anything that you're trying to excel and achieve. And whether that be sports or sales is silencing that little voice that, okay, it's possible. You can do this. You can do this. That self-talk. Yeah, you know, th- this is very interesting to me. And I'd like to get your take on this. Um, when you were swimming, Did you have to, I'm making finger quotes here, did you have to motivate yourself every day to go swim? Definitely. Or did you just go swim? Yeah, no, you had to motivate yourself every day to go swim. You didn't feel like it when you were tired, when you had to be with your friends. And yeah, you had to every day motivate yourself. Okay, well, that is really, I just learned something new. Um, Because when I was dancing, motivating yourself to take class was a non-starter. You just took class. And then the next day you took class. And then the day after that you took class. It There was never a decision-making process, um, at least for me. So just, would you say you were on autopilot, just like your practice was the same time every day and you just went to it like, every day, that was your schedule and nothing got in the way unless you were very, very ill, or of course, something normal like that, or even when you were ill, you still did it. Absolutely. If you were in the hospital, you didn't go to class. But other than that, you pretty much went to class. (laughs) You were there. It was all or nothing. And so I just learned something very interesting from you, um, that even as an athlete and a high performing athlete, you still felt that you had to motivate yourself to actually do it. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So um, how do you motivate yourself today if you're having a bad day and you don't really (laughs) feel like going to work and selling? My motivation has to be my children and my my family. I, I think I think every sales person trying to knowing that they want to achieve their goals has to has a have a why like whether you want the bigger house it's different for everyone we all know that what what's what are you what do you want to achieve and i i believe that a some sort of a vision board or writing down what your goals are daily 
is is huge or weekly, whatever works for you, whatever works for you to motivate you. And I know that I have two young boys and I want to give them everything that my parents gave me. So, and more. So that that's that's why I do what I motivate myself every day to not get distracted with the phone and turn it off and do what you need to do during those set scheduled hours and even pull the computer on it out at night and do things that you don't want to waste time doing during the day, right? That, you know, that bad, we all know there's data entry involved in sales and stuff that you just have to do for larger companies. And again, like the list is never ending, but if you can do it later, maybe and not waste that valuable time during the day to engage with people, I think that's valuable too. Yes. And certainly having um, two young children at home, that's a huge motivator. So good for you, Lorraine. So if people want to get in touch with you, um, how, how should people get in touch with you? What's the best way to, to reach out if, if they'd like to talk to you about insurance or something else? Sure. So my best way to get in touch with me would be, of course, LinkedIn and as well as my email address. I think that would be the best way. I always, I'm always checking my emails. I have it on my phone like the rest of us do, right? It's 2023. So Anytime I'm always available to discuss anyone's needs. Okay, wonderful. And so um, if you'd like to get in touch with Lorraine, uh, her LinkedIn profile, the link to her LinkedIn profile will be in the show notes, as will her email address. So um, if you want to get in touch with Lorraine to talk about insurance, to talk about sales, as soon as you finish listening to this podcast, go to the show notes click on the link. And um, and by the way, LinkedIn is how I met Lorraine. So she reached out to me after I had been on a podcast and here we are. So it works. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. So our special guest today has been Lorraine Deneen. She is the Vice President of Employee Benefits at USI Insurance Services. And you have been listening to the Salesology Conversations with Sales Leaders podcast. And if you found value in listening to today's podcast, then please think about one sales leader, one business owner, one sales professional that you know that you think might also find value in listening to today's podcast and please do share the link with them and till we meet again visualize yourself surrounded by cash really large bills you've been listening to salesology conversations with sales leaders the art of faster easier more profitable sales Be sure to follow so that you don't miss a single episode. And while you're at it, please leave a rating and review and be sure to share it with your friends. Tune in every week for more exciting insights and wisdom on transforming sales. And until next time, visualize yourself surrounded by cash. Very large bills.